Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be reviewing the Win Water Cooled Sharpening System and why you may want to consider it for your next tool purchase. We'll also go over some tips and tricks on how to use the system, which are also applicable to the Tormex systems. So all that, coming up. Alright, so I want to try out a water cooled system after reading Lorraine Thomas's article on KnifeSteelNerds.com about how using your belt sander could have some negative effects on your edge. So I'll put the link to that in the description below. Go ahead and read that article uh, when you get the time. It's a good read. So I ordered this Win Weststone sharpener from Amazon. In my case, I got the single torque model. However, there's also a variable torque model that can give you some more flexibility. Uh, the jig modifications and sharpening techniques that I'll be showing in this video are applicable to both models as well as the Tormek models and some Grizzly models and things like that. The unit does not come with any useful knife sharpening jigs, so you'll have to buy those separate. A Win offers an accessory kit which has a knife sharpening jig in it. You can also buy the Tormek SVM45 standalone knife jig. Uh, both of them are pretty good and I'm actually going to do a comparison of Wins and Tormex knife jigs side by side later on in the video and then you can make up your mind which one you'd like to buy. Uh, like always, I want to point out here that I'll put links to all the items that I'm mentioning in this video that I think are worth buying uh, in the description below to make it easier on you guys. Two other useful additions while we're talking about additional items to buy are going to be the stone grater and then the dressing tool. So the Tormek SP650 stone grater can help you adjust the grit of your wheel. It comes 220 from the factory, uh, but you can use the fine side and get your wheel to what they advertise as around 1,000 uh, grit for your fine edges. And then also the TT50 Tormek uh, wheel dressing and uh, the wheel dressing and truing tool. Uh, this tool will allow you to get this surface nice and flat and also in line with your tool rest. And I think especially on these aftermarket kind of import models of this system, uh, it's, a, it's a necessity because these wheels are not 100% true coming from the factory. So my win came in perfect working order from the factory. Uh, there was no issues with the system. The wheel wasn't obviously out of true or anything like that. I saw some, uh, some reports of people's wheels being so out of true that it would sling water all over the place in uh, normal operation, just idling, not even sharpening. And uh, I did not have that problem at idle. It does get everything pretty wet, but that's why you're sharpening it the tools in it. Um, the, uh, make sure that when you first fill it the first time you bring a lot of water because this wheel will soak up a good deal of water. And on that note, don't store this machine in an environment that can freeze, otherwise this wheel will the water inside the wheel will expand and bust it. And lastly, this is a 220 grit wheel that's 10 inches, around 10 inches in diameter. It comes with this work rest and it comes with a leather strop here, a power strop. You'll also get some uh, polishing compound for your straw, but that's pretty much it in the basic package. The jigs are going to be a necessity for you to buy in addition. We're now going to touch on the Tormek TT50 truing and dressing tool. You can see here that I'm getting it set up, which is the most difficult part of the operation on the aftermarket sharpeners since the fine tuning adjustments are not as precise. So you kind of have to fiddle around with it to get it uh, to contact your stone. I like to take off very small increments at a time when using this tool and make several passes. The way that it works is you're turning these knobs at a controlled pace and slowly taking off a little bit of the surface of the stone uh, with this, I think it's a diamond impregnated tip here. So it works really good. It will make the stone perfectly true to your work rest, which is what you want when sharpening knives. Over time, your stone can get worn unevenly, so it's nice to have this truing and dressing tool around uh, to sure it up from time to time. Next, we're going to go over the comparison between the Tormek knife sharpening jig and the Win knife sharpening jig. You can see they both look very similar to each other. It's probably because Win straight up copied Tormek's design. There is one major difference, and it is this front bolt here. It's very low profile on the Tormek, and it's very high on the wind, and this will actually get in the way when flipping your blade. So I'll show this in a second, how it gets in the way, and then we'll go over a modification later on on how to repair this issue. I will say that the Tormek 
knife jig is obviously of a better construction and it has better castings than the import win jig. The internals of the two jigs look pretty much the same and functionally they are identical in my opinion after you modify the high profile bolt. This is the issue I was mentioning just now. You can see how the high profile knob will hit the grinding stone before the knife does in some situations depending on the geometry of the blade. The win hardware for this knob is six millimeters by one. I went through my scrap bin and I actually found one miraculously that was the right size. I cut it to length and then you can see here that it has plenty of clearance on the same knife with same orientation on the work rest. I then took my Dremel tool and cut some little notches in the head of the bolt to make it easier to grip because most of the time you're using your fingers uh, to manipulate that bolt. So this is the standard method for using a Tormek sharpening system. You can see I have the big wind jig on here for large blades. This works very well on gradually sloping edges on like a kitchen knife like I'm doing right here. You can see that I'm slightly raising my right hand and following the edge. You can use the water on the wheel to indicate where your edge is contacting the wheel. While this method works very good for a gradually sloping edge kitchen knife, it doesn't work well for some drop point hunters. I've noticed that when using this method with a drop point hunter with a more aggressive curvature of the edge towards the spine, you'll see the tip of the blade having not nearly as steep of an angle as the belly of the blade. So you have more of a chisel-like tip and a more of a slicey belly. And to me this is undesirable. I'd much rather have the same or at least very close to the same bevel angle on my secondary bevel throughout the entire blade. So there are some modifications you can make to the knife grinding jig to achieve these results and I'm going to show those next. So there are a lot of different ways that you can make this same modification. I'm choosing kind of a cheapo, quick and dirty brute force method. I'm actually going to be drilling a hole in the jig with this, uh, I'm going to start off with this eighth of an inch spotting drill and then I'm going to increase that hole to around 5 16 because I had some 5 16 stock. I'm just going to put a bar there. There are some other really cool designs to achieve the same technique that are more flexible than this design. I'll throw up some pictures of these other designs because they're way more elegant than mine. One of their major advantages are that they allow you to move that bar up and down the length of the jig. So here I'm just peening over the holes that I made so that I have a tight fit between the bar and the jig. I really didn't know how well this would work so I wanted to kind of do a quick and dirty to see if I liked the method. And then down the road if this ever fails me I can make a more complex version. But so far I've probably sharpened about 30 knives with this jig and it's worked great. I actually use it without that black guide on the back. I find that guide still, uh, still gets in the way. To me, one part of the new sharpening system with this jig is utilizing a laser as a guide. I took the laser out of my wind drill press because I never use it and mounted it into a holder for a tripod so that I can project that laser across the stone and try to keep the edge the same distance away from the laser the whole time as I lift my hand and pivot the blade. It's a little finicky to set up, but you'll be happy that you have it. I'll normally draw a line on the wheel with a sharpie and then line this laser uh, up with that line. So like I said, it takes a couple minutes, but once you get it, you'll be happy you did. The first thing I'm going to show here is the old method. So this is just the hand raising. See how far away the tip is from that line. And then the next pass is going to be with the new uh, jig modification with a pivot. And you can see how much closer you can get the tip to that line as you raise your hand and pivot. So this is pivotal to the new sharpening system and very, very handy for drop points. Another item I'd like to mention is the Tormek SP650. This is a stone grater. It has a coarse side and a fine side. The idea is that you can rejuvenate your wheel to a 220 grit using the coarse side if it ever gets loaded up and then you can change your wheel to a finer grit using the fine side. Uh, I've only used this a couple times and I, I think it works pretty good, uh, but it does make a mess when you're using it unless you use it on the top of the wheel. So after you got your blade sharpened to the appropriate grit that you're looking for, whether it's 220 or 1000 
on the stone, head on over to your power strop, uh, put a little compound on it or some maybe some uh, green compound for buffing. That works pretty good too. Go ahead and power strop off that burr and you will have a very sharp working edge. It's not generally a mirror finish edge, but it is way good enough for any task around the shop or hunting or things of that nature. I've sharpened every one of our kitchen knives at the house as well as all of the hunting knives that I own and it performs very well for those tasks. Overall I have two major complaints with the system. Number one is it's loud uh, which I can get over that and number two is that it's extremely messy so if you're trying to do this inside that may be a problem for you. I do it out in the garage and to mitigate the mess I normally throw down some towels and this helps greatly but while you're sharpening the blades, the blades will kick up water and the thing's gonna make a mess. However, even with those two things in mind, uh, I still recommend this product just because it can get your blades really sharp, really fast, and it's kind of a no-brainer to use once you have some jig modifications made. Uh, one of the drawbacks, like we mentioned earlier, is that you do have to buy uh, multiple additional items to make this a usable system. It's obviously not as precise of a machine as the Tormek system, it's not as well made, uh, but it's also a fraction of the price. All in all, I think it's a very cost-effective item if you're looking to get a water-cooled sharpener. When you're looking for this unit online, note that availability varies. Sometimes it's in stock, sometimes it's not. They also have a Grizzly version, a Jet version, and a couple of other uh, Tormek knockoffs out there. So if you can't find the win, you do have some other options. That wraps up this review. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please hit that like button below and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll have more tool reviews like this and also applicable videos to the knife maker. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.